While you may have believed that all significant revelations had been unveiled in this documentary, be prepared for several more remarkable discoveries yet to be revealed. Both Jinnah and Gandhi underwent shifts in their positions, contradicting their previous stances. To delve further, let's first examine Jinnah's backtrack from his initial principled stand. In June 1947, Jinnah accepted the partition of Punjab and Bengal provinces, despite his earlier staunch opposition, which is as follows. On February 23, 1947, he emphatically declared, The Muslim League will not yield an inch in their demand for Pakistan. Later, on May 1st of the same year, he denounced the partition, calling it a sinister move actuated by spite and bitterness. He further said, I do hope that neither the Viceroy nor His Majesty's government will fall into this trap and commit a grave error. Merely three weeks later, on May 21st, Jinnah demanded a corridor between East and West Pakistan, expressing his resistance by stating, Partition of the Punjab and Bengal, if affected, will no doubt weaken Pakistan to a certain extent. Weak Pakistan and a strong Hindustan will be a temptation for the strong Hindustan to try to dictate. I have always said that Pakistan must be a viable Pakistan and sufficiently strong as a balance vis-à-vis -vis Hindustan. I am therefore deadly against the partition of Bengal and the Punjab, and we shall fight every inch against it. When Jinnah accepted a truncated Pakistan, strong opposition arose within his Muslim League. Among the opponents were Professor Abdur Rahim, a member of the All India Muslim League Council, and Zahirul Hassan Lari, deputy leader of the United Provinces Muslim League. Moreover, Muslims from Bengal, who had specially come from Calcutta, gathered outside the Imperial Hotel where the Council of the All India Muslim League session was being held, shouting, Down with the division of Bengal! In addition to the Bengali protesters, there were others denouncing the partition of Punjab and Bengal. The idea of demanding territories like the Northwest Frontier Province, Sindh, Baluchistan, and Bengal to establish Pakistan, despite Muslims already holding power in those regions, raises questions and lacks logical reasoning. Additionally, creating a country with two wings, separated by over a thousand miles, can be seen as irrational. Accepting the partition of the two provinces, Punjab and Bengal, resulted in a reduction in the geographical areas allocated to Pakistan. However, if India had not been divided, Muslims would have continued to rule a larger region. The partition of Punjab and Bengal not only confirms that Jinnah followed what the Mountbatten told him to do, but also highlights his lack of power to prevent the partition of the two provinces. The only thing Jinnah could do was to deplore the division. It is important to note that there was severe opposition across the board to the acceptance of the partition plan, except for the All India Muslim League. Out of hundreds, not a single political or non-political party, group, or entity supported partition. Based on the anticipation of dangerous consequences, partition was opposed throughout India and even abroad by Indian Muslims and non-Muslims alike. There were fervent hopes for the reunion of India in the future. Now let's examine some clips that vividly depict the widespread opposition to the division of India.
To understand the truth about the partition of India, the politics of Jinnah, Gandhi, and the British rulers, watch the documentary titled The Road to Freedom, Alama Mashriki's Historic Journey from Amritsar to Lahore. Additionally, read or listen to the audio version of the article named The British Chessboard, Jinnah, Gandhi, and the Strategic Divide of India, both of which are by scholar Nassim Yusuf and available on social media.